questions uh, in between, or you okay. can just uh, respond to them at the end of the lecture, no problem. Okay, I'm also okay both way. So, is this any question in Arabic? Maybe you need to translate it to me. Yeah, yeah sure, no problem, inshallah. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabi al amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Uh, respected guests, uh, uh, lecturers, professionals, uh, students, my dear brothers and sisters, and our special uh, guest speaker today, Dr. Muhammad Ashraf al Mubin. Uh, we'd like to welcome you all to this uh, session, a uh, very important session uh, on data management in Islamic finance, uh, which will be conducted by Dr. Muhammad Shafal Mubin today. Uh, as uh, this is a part of our, um, and our ongoing uh, programs and projects um, under the supervision of Islamic uh, Economics Association, of the Sharia Faculty of Sharia and Islamic Studies, Kuwait University. So this is a, a pioneer education research and training platform. As we know that the association uh, specially promotes Sharia compliant finance frameworks, strategies and models through uh, organizing events, workshops, conferences, lectures, talks and seminars and trainings. Uh, both in Arabic and English languages, which covers a wide areas of uh, a range of areas in Islamic banking and finance, uh, among which are Islamic microfinance, Islamic insurance, Islamic capital market, equity market, features of Sharia principles of Islamic finance, the nature of contracts and products and services provided by uh, Islamic banks. <laughs> Uh, the association also focuses on arranging talks and uh, lectures on various specific topics um, like contemporary topics, which include sukuk, work of management, wealth and debt management, fintech, retail and corporate banking products and so on. So uh, uh, to this uh, program and uh, to this lecture on data management in Islamic finance, is one of the uh, interest uh, of uh, Islamic Economics Association. So we are very much honored to have our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Muhammad Ashraf al uh, who is currently uh, the director of Fint iFintel Business Intelligence, uh, Financial Data Analytics and FinTech Consulting Agency based in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, he is also serving as a visiting academic in a few universities in Malaysia, such as University of Malaya, University of Science Malaysia. And uh, he, uh, prior to that, he served uh, at Islamic Financial Services Board as a research specialist, and also at the Center of Social Innovation, uh, Petronas University as a research scientist. Dr. Mubin has completed his PhD uh, in Islamic Finance from INSEF, Global University of Islamic Finance in Malaysia. And uh, Dr. Mubin uh, has presented uh, many papers in uh, conferences and forums as he moderated and also reviewed the papers in more than 25 international conferences. And he has many research uh, projects ongoing and also he has um, implemented and completed many research projects uh, in uh, respective fields and areas. So this is our honor to have uh, today Dr. Ashraful, Muhammad Ashraful Mubin to uh, conduct the lecture on data management in Islamic finance. On behalf of Islamic Economics Association, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Muhammad Ashraful Mubin uh, to conduct the lecture. Uh, please welcome Dr. Mubin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Dr. Mohuddin Mahi and the organization for the opportunity to share my knowledge and also to learn from our participants, most probably during the QA session. Uh, please allow me to share my screen and then I'll proceed. 
okay as we have only one hour time time is limited and the topic itself deserve and requires longer time so i'll be very brief in the introduction but while discussing different slides topics issues i'll be introducing myself or organizations what we do how we do so this particular session is going to be a bit different from other session because it requires some practical uh, experience also practical demonstration okay so what i mean actually the participants they need to attend from the beginning to the end if you come in between then you will get lost somewhere you will not get to understand the track and trace the discussion okay uh, if you don't understand any topic or any particular wording you can just write on the chat box please try to type in english it will be easier for me to understand and if not i need the help from dr mohiddin mai okay so moving forward uh, our topic is data management in islamic finance or islamic financial data management very interesting topic we have few things here understand we have data we have finance then we have islamic finance then we have the management so if you look at the title the data management in islamic finance or islamic financial data management there are three things we need to understand at first what is data then what is financial data then what is islamic financial data and finally how to manage this islamic financial data okay let's move forward uh, basically i'm representing i think the and business intelligence firm we help academicians industry players in data analytics from statistics to machine learning artificial intelligence many activities we have certificate courses training programs we have our own islamic financial intelligence dashboard other things that i can introduce to you later now let's move forward to our topic okay moving forward these are the things that we are going to cover today at first as i said we are going to discuss about the islamic financial data the overview what is data what is financial data and then what is islamic financial data second thing we will be talking about is the sources of this data well maybe we understand that data is important but how to collect the data and from where we can collect the data do we need to pay to collect the data or it is free if it is free how we can collect that so we are going to talk about all the sources there we can collect the islamic financial data the next part is okay once you understand the data collection part how to clean the data uh, if time allows i will try to show a demo uh, how to collect and how to clean the data very briefly and then the next question will be if stand for islamic finance once we have the data for islamic finance how we analyze that data again if time allows i'll try to show you hands on practice and some industry report and dashboard so this is actually the agenda for today okay now the islamic financial data well uh as i said before at first we need to understand what is data then financial data then islamic financial data one funny thing is here you know once we say islamic financial data then the common question comes what do we mean by islamic data i mean data is data mobile phone is mobile phone laptop is laptop what do you mean by islamic laptop or what do you mean by islamic mobile phone 
What do you mean by Islamic data? What we mean here is actually the Islamic financial data means data collected from Islamic market. Data collected from Islamic market means if you collect the data for conventional bank, that is conventional data. If you collect the data from Islamic banks, Islamic insurance companies, Islamic capital market, we call it Islamic financial market data. Okay. So, I mean, this is a common confusion actually. Uh, what does it mean by Islamic financial market data? I think it clears now. It's clear now. Now, we all talk about the digital economy, fintech, artificial intelligence, machine learning, many other trendy words. And some of these words, some of the jargon seems quite uh, not familiar with us. We got scared. But whatever we name it, data is a raw material. Data is the fuel of digital economy. And Islamic market data is the fuel of Islamic digital economy. You name it. FinTech, artificial intelligence, machine learning. You want to understand the Islamic market. You want to come up with a new product. You want to understand the investor sentiment. You want to understand your client. All these things, or you want to do academic research. You want to do a policy paper. The basic thing, the raw material that you need is the data. If you don't have a good data, you're stuck. You may need to go for some qualitative and some theoretical way, but to prove the thing and to see the picture, make some decision, you need the data. Okay. So of, as I have listed some of the points here, you can see, for the academic research, either you are from the Department of Islamic Studies, Department of Finance and Banking, or Islamic Banking, or Department of Machine Learning, any other department. If you are doing some work on Islamic finance, then you need to have the data set for academic research. Now, my fellow academician, Sometimes it sounds very scary huh? once you talk about the data analytics, econometrics, machine learning. If you are not from the mathematics or statistics background, it may sound you know, very scary. Wow, these are number. How do we analyze a number? This software, that software. Trust me, this is very easy. And it's easier than using your smartphone. What I mean here, remember the very first time you had your smartphone. You were very scared, right? Why had to push, why not to push, why had to press? If I press here, will I make a call? But now you cannot live without a smartphone. Same goes with the data analysis. Uh, for the first few days, you may feel a bit nervous, but once you are into this, it's very easy. It's very easy. And being a researcher, being an industry practitioner, being a policymaker, it will open many doors for you. There are many things that you will be able to see that many other people cannot see. For example, if you go to a doctor, what does doctor do? Doctor open the X-ray or MRI report and then look at the film or ECG report. Right, then look at the some indicators and he explains. Right, being a layman, I don't understand what does x ray MRI means, but if I understand the meaning of this, I can diagnose the disease. Data analysis is exactly the same thing. If you know what does it mean, how to interpret, how to analyze, you will be able to understand what is happening now, what happened before, what might happen in future. That's why actually data analysis is very important. Uh, so for academic research, for industry research, 
for market analysis or policy decision. And for sure, FinTech application, you are working on Islamic microfinance. You are trying to find a solution for the poor people, how they can get rid of the poverty and you are trying to develop an app, you need the data. Uh, you are trying to come up with a product or a model, or you want to understand if I replace this product with that product, how the market will react, you need the data. So it's not only academic research, either you're in the industry, you're in the FinTech, you need the data. And if you are working on the Islamic finance area, Islamic economy, that's actually uh, Islamic financial data. Now, this is a bit technical. So if you have any question until this part, uh, you can put your question on the chat box. Um, I'll try to read and if it's relevant, I'll try to respond. Okay. Now the data formats is a bit technical. If you are from different background, don't get scared. If you are from finance or statistics background, definitely you are aware of this. This is easy. For example, uh, if you use Microsoft Word, what is the ex extension? .doc. For PDF, .pdf. In our data analysis, we have many software. Uh, some of the very popular software like Stata, SPSS, SAS, R, we have Python, we have MATLAB, and many others. You can name hundreds. And different software got different strength and weakness. That's what actually we are trying to uh, highlight here. Strength and weakness of different uh, software and data analysis tools. Okay, uh, maybe we can come back to this slide later once we have understanding of other concepts, but if, Anytime you want to figure out how Stata is better or how R is worse or what are the options that we have, I think this table will help you a lot to understand and compare different tools. Anyway, okay, let me move to the next one. Okay, understanding this particular slide is important. And if you can understand these simple slide, the type of data, it will help you in many ways to clear some misconception. Also, to map out the analysis that you want to do. First of all, I'll focus on this part. The types of data in terms of its format. Once we talk about the data, first thing first that comes to, our, comes to our mind is some numbers. Total asset, number of employees, number of banks, GDP, inflation. We can imagine the numbers, right? But you should know data, not only the numbers. It can be text. You are typing in the chat box, different message, salam, and, and many other messages, right? You're asking questions, all this text that you are typing, that is data. All the writing that I have in my slide, this is data. All the news information that you get in the newspaper, in the TV, everything, that is data. All the text that you have, that is data. All the images, like for example, if you have a CCTV closed circuit camera at the main gate of your university, and it takes all the pictures, right? Who is coming, who is going, all these images are data. And for that in machine learning, we have a dedicated chapter that image processing analysis, correct? And uh, you see the doctors, they look at the x-ray report. These x-ray films are data. 
and then also the videos are data. So data not only the numeric like one, two, three, four, five. It can be text. Uh, another good example of textual data analysis is social media, like for example, Facebook and Twitter, Facebook comments, Twitter tweets, and all these things are data, right? Social media data analysis, or we have the dedicated chapter in machine learning, we call it natural language processing. And based on that, we develop the Rubo advisory, uh, the Rubo Shori advisory, and many other things that you can develop actually. Image processing analysis will help in many ways to solve many problems. For example, one of the study that I can name, uh, I was very much interested in very recently that was use the Google Earth image to understand. Uh, you can look for the paper, the IMF paper. Um, just looking at the night, the lights of the city in the night time, and how it is connected to the development of a country. Maybe I can show you the paper here. Uh, just go to the Google, look for IMF paper, nighttime image. Okay, this one. just by using the satellite image how uh, you can actually develop some interesting research paper what they did actually they took the satellite image during the night time and the city or the place is more enlightened considered the economic development is much higher there and they have some other hypothesis they talk about that what I'm trying to say, you see, here as a data, they took the images, satellite images, not the one, two, three other numbers. And they analyzed this to understand the economic development, economic growth. And this was the paper by IMF. You can simply search in the Google and find the paper. Okay, uh, so that's what I mean actually. So it's not only the number, is also in many other ways you can get it. The videos, the text and others. Okay. So if we are clear on this part, data is not necessarily the numeric, it can be textual, it can be image, it can be videos. The next question is that uh, another point you need to understand the structured data and unstructured data. On the structured data is properly categorized. Okay, this is D, this is that. In unstructured data is random that you need to manage it properly and categorize it properly. And then we have another thing. If you are a researcher and specifically academician, and more specifically, if you are from economics background or economics researcher, then this is very, very, very relevant to you to understand the differences between cross sectional time series and panel data. While I'm talking about Islamic financial data management, why I am covering this particular part? Because if you don't understand these differences, it will be difficult for you to understand the next slides once we go deep into the Islamic financial data. What does this mean? Uh, you can look at this particular slide, the next one. For example, you want to understand the GDP trend in Middle Eastern countries, MENA countries, Middle Eastern and North African countries. If you have the data for one year, for example, 2017, but for all the MENA countries, we call it cross-sectional data. But if you have data for many years, but only for Kuwait, that one is time series. But if means if you have data for more than one period, it can be year, it can be month, it can be day, it can be minute, second, and microsecond. Means if it's more than one period, we call it time series. But in your data set, if you has both, 
many years and many countries, then we call it panel letter. You look at here. Uh, imagine that country number one is Kuwait, country number two is Qatar, country number three is uh, Emirates, right? For all these three countries, we have data for 2000, 2001, 2002, right? Means many countries, many years. This one we call the panel data. For our research, usually we prefer the panel data because it gives us more information and we can analyze the trend and find the relationship and do the predictions in better way. Okay, why is important in Islamic finance? Let me tell you, this panel data will help you in many ways. Once you do research in Islamic finance, one problem that you will face that you do not have data for many years. If you go for conventional finance, conventional economics, you will find that you have data for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, many years. But once this come to the Islamic finance, you'll find you have data for three years, four years, five years like that. Correct? That means the time series analysis might not be suitable in your case. And cross-sectional analysis has so many limitations, so many assumptions, sometimes it's very difficult to go through. In that case, panel data is the savior. Means you have data for five years only, but for many countries, for many banks, many companies, that one you can design as a panel data format, or we call it short panel data. And that will help you a lot. And so in Islamic finance, this panel data is very relevant. So once you look at this particular slide, for Islamic finance, this panel data will help you. If you look at the social media data analysis, you can look in the texture and others. Let's move forward. Okay. This is a checklist I collected from the Princeton University, their website. Before you start any data analysis, these are a few things you need to consider. That if you have all these things ready before you start your analysis, you need to understand that your variables means the features, the indicators, the factors are in the column and observations in the rows. Here you see the year and these are my features. These are in columns and observations in the rows. You need to make sure all the variables and all the factors and the things that you need, you have that data available. Right? And of course, you need to have at least one ID, ID referring to the country or company or the bank that you are choosing for. As I said, if it's time series, and you need to make sure that how many years you want and if it's included in your study. If you are into data analysis, only doing some data analysis, this point number five is very interesting and important for you. There's a difference between blank and zero. If I say, I do not have data for Kuwait Islamic banks for the year 2020. That means I do not have the data. That is blank. But if I say the GDP for Kuwait for 2020 is zero, these are two different things, right? In many cases, the data analyst make a mistake here. They put zero if it's a blank, but this information is wrong. So this is another thing you need to be very careful once you clean your data. You should not put zero if the data not available. You should put a space, means blank, or you can put a dot depending on the software that you are using. And of course, you should save the data in a cloud or in backup. Uh, it happened to many people actually that you are working at some point, uh, your laptop got crashed, you lost your data, you don't know what to do. 
So always make sure that you have a backup copy. And the code book. Code book means uh, what is code book actually meaning here? All the factors, variables that you are actually uh, referring to, right? Uh, that you can store here. Okay, these particular variables I'm designing with A, with B, with C, like that. So these are some of the checklists that you can focus on. Uh, and this is sourced from the Princeton University. Now, coming back to Islam financial data sources, uh, the discussion that I had for last uh, 15 minutes, that is a bit technical, but uh, if you're in data analysis, it will help. But this particular one, the data sources, I think you need this information. Now the question is that, do we need to pay for all kinds of data? Means you want to do an analysis, but you do not have a grant. You do not have a fund from the university. You don't have a budget from the company or the industry, but you need to do the analysis. <clears throat> so what you can do? What are the options that you have? The way I look into this, any moment that you want to do an analysis, first thing first, you should look for if the data is available in public domain. Public domain means domain from the government or from the organizations which they do not charge you to collect and download the data or to use the data. For example, if you go to your central bank website, almost all the central bank's website got the data uploaded, the financial data mostly, in their website. Right? Uh, but, or if you just go to the capital market, these are regulatory bodies, supervisory body, they collect the data from the market and they have it available in their website. So you can just simply collect the data from those sources and use it for analysis and research. But in case, if you do not find the data available in your central bank or regulatory bodies website, the next thing what you can do actually, you can go to the global organization like IMF, World Bank, and many other organizations, they will have the data. But for Islamic finance specific data, it's uh, suggested that you go for Islamic, your own central bank. Usually they segregate the conventional and Islamic data. If we have time, I'll try to show a demo how you can download that one. There's another source. If you're looking for the country level Islamic financial data, you can get it is from the Islamic Financial Services Board, IFSB. I used to work there before. Uh, as a research uh, specialist, a specialist as well. So from the Islamic Financial Services Board website, you can actually collect the data. And they have a very comprehensive data for almost all the countries. They have this uh, banking and finance. Maybe I can show you to their website. So just go to the Google and search for Islamic Financial Services Board. IFSB. Okay, this is the IFSB website. Once you are in this website, go to this one, PCFIS, right? Once you are in PCFIS, here you can see all the data, key exhibits, then data by country, Islamic banking, for Takaful Islamic insurance data, Islamic capital market data, what are the indicators they have, you can download the metadata from here. They have the FAQs and you have the guides. You have the task force who are the people actually getting the data. You can get the brochure. And this data is quite reliable because this data, the IFSB is the organizations of the central banks, including Kuwait and Middle Eastern central banks. And this data is actually validated and approved by the central banks who are sending this data. Uh, if you look at their task force, uh, you can see that the central banks 
Bank Indonesia, from Iran, from Malaysia, from Pakistan, uh, from IDB, from Sudan, and many others are actually uh, managing this data, data set from all the central banks. So this data is actually quite reliable uh, for Islamic finance. And you can find all the indicators, you can download it from here and open it here. And you can see the aggregated ind indicators here, total asset, show your company financing, funding, number of Islamic banks, branches, and employees, and many other information. Here you can see, you have all these countries, Afghanistan, Bahrain, Bangladesh, Egypt, Kuwait, right? Uh, we just go to the Kuwait here, and um, maybe for example, just click on this PDF file, it's downloaded, and you can see all the information that you need. Here, if we zoom, save it, you will be able to see uh, the information for Islamic banks in Kuwait, the capital adequacy, and they have tier one capital, total regulatory capital, the asset quality, the, all the earnings, ROA, ROE, net profit, then the leverage ratio, the risk indicators, uh, financing, the Sukuk holding. Uh, so all this data for actually the Mudaraba, Musharaka, all the contracts, uh, the number of ATMs, the branches, the funding, earning before taxes and zakat, and many other information. So this is quite comprehensive and uh, an asset for you. If you're looking for uh, this kind of data, so you can simply download the data from there. Uh, of course, if you are doing the analysis, you would prefer to have the data in the Excel format. Here you see, this is a PDF format, and this is the Excel format. Simply click on Excel, and it will download it. And yep, here you see, you can actually download it in the Excel format and simply you can use it to your Stata SPSS and all other software, Python, MATLAB, our language that you want to use it. Okay, so this is a very good source. Uh, many times that once you struggle with this claim finance data, right, how much I need to pay, I don't have the budget, uh, I think if you just come to the IFSD website, you don't need to pay a single cent. Simply click, download the data, and use it for your research. Right? Okay. Now, so you come to a point that uh, you search all the public available sources that are not available, and you have a minimum budget uh, or a budget or a fund that you can actually buy the data. Uh, then what's the option you have? Then you go for the privately available sources like Bloomberg. In the Bloomberg, they have a data, right? Uh, huge amount of data if you have the subscription for the Bloomberg, but it's very expensive, right? And then you have the Fitch Connect and many other private organizations who will give you the data. At iFintel, we also have a Islamic financial database. They are, we have to actually have the data for the global market. We have the data for the bank specific and all other markets. Not only that, we also provide help uh, to download the data and also to analyze the data. Machine learning models, uh, statistical models, for example, uh, this is actually one of the sample uh, of our report that you can see we have uh, for iFintel uh, system, the Islamic financial intelligence. We have the country here. You can select any country uh, that you want to choose for, right? Now, all the countries that we have, once you select a country and whole dashboard will change automatically that you can simply download the graph from here and change it. If you select a particular year, then whole dashboard will change automatically. It's very dynamic and interactive. And if you go to want to select any particular year, and you can just select that and get the data immediately for the whole thing. You can get the number of Islamic banks and income details for all the countries you can have. Then we also the market intelligence, the machine learning model, the prediction. Uh, so usually what we do, we 
download the data, we analyze the data, and only then we actually get the report and we and, uh, interpret the report. But in our system, what we did actually, uh, this whole thing integrated. Behind the back in Python and other languages, we have developed the models for the whole Islamic market. Then we have visualized that in our dashboard. Means uh, if you subscribe to the, this dashboard, you can actually uh, download the whole report ready. And if you spend one or two years to download data, clean data, develop model, analyze model, then machine learning models, interpret, actually you can get it done in IPT system for maybe three days, the three years of work, because the whole thing we have developed in the system for the global Islamic market. So there's another source uh, from IFINTEL uh, that you can collect. But I, as I always say, if you get the data from the public available sources, you do not need to come to us. You don't need to go to the Bloomberg or Fitch Connect. Get the data from the public available sources. It will save you money, it will save you time. But if you cannot get it from there, and if you have budget, then you can uh, communicate uh, with these organizations, Bloomberg, Fitch Connect, and IFINTEL will provide including the analysis. Now, if you are in a scenario that you do not have the access to, you do not get the data from the private sources, you do not have the, in the public sources, what you do? The last option that you have for the secondary data I'm talking about, uh, you can get the data from the audited reports, the financial statement, because all the registered company, listed company, they, need, they are required to publish the report, right? So you can get the data from the audited reports. Or the government organizations, the universities, in many institutions, they do the investigation time to time, but they do not publish that data. If you talk to regulators or the ministries, they have many data they don't know in many times how to analyze but this is as because it's confidential they don't publish it but if you can have a and the a an agreement with them you can actually have the access to that data so this another way in a smart way you can get the data by signing some nda with different organizations so these are some of the way you can actually collect the data which is secondary once i mean the secondary what i mean Secondary means the data not produced yet. Data, sorry, data is already produced. Primary means data is not produced yet. Okay. And that one we call a secondary. So if you do not find the data in secondary sources, like data not produced, data uh, not produced yet, then you go for the primary sources but if data is already available there's no point of spending money for survey or interviews or field observation or experiments if it's already available uh, and for your information another thing i want to mention here and it will help you a lot because once we do the analysis for islamic finance many times we want to do the analysis for the religiosity right how religious the people are we want to include that indicator or variables or uh, social values trust social capital and other values so this one data source and which is free will help you a lot uh, to get it done without doing any survey you go to the google or let me close this okay don't need this just go to google and look for world value survey right this database it was free before i'm not sure if it's still free so actually uh they have still now web 7 that can is you can easily do a different waves and different panel data out of this and here from here you can actually get their data and the documentation so they have all these indicators uh if i can show you some of the indicators it will help for you to understand 
you can actually download data from here. You can do online analysis here. You see, they have the data every five years, from 81 to 84, 1994, and like this. If we look at here, and you see, you can choose your country. Let's look for Kuwait. Kenya. Okay, let's look for Malaysia at the moment. Okay, and once you are, then you go for the next option. You select the indicators. What indicator you want to choose, right? Uh, let's say religion. And you can see there are many indicators that relate to the religion, importance in life, religion, neighbors another religions and so many other surveys that you are doing every day uh, is already done here and it's verified so uh, you can simply use this data for example if i choose something simply religions immediately the whole <coughs> survey the graph and information is available you can simply uh, even choose the language and things and download the report and use it for your research you just need to quote and cite it properly. And then you can actually go to the maps and you can go for the time series analysis from this website uh, for the indicator that you have chosen. You can download the Excel file from here or you can just get the PDF file and things. So you see, usually the time we spend for survey and other things. And see, we have a look for actually just selected important in life religion and all the countries it gives me the data and the maps and other information so it's very easy it's ready there you don't need to work hard uh, to get it done and to spend money for a few years and to spend money for the research assistant so rather we should spend money for the things that's not done yet and to make it better Okay, but uh, of course, if the data are not available in any of the sources, then you can need to collect the data from the primary sources by survey, interviews, experiments, measurements, user input. These are some of the way you can collect the primary data. Okay, I think uh, I already shown you some of the demos. Uh, we have very limited time. So uh, from the IFSB, I will show you from the world level survey. I have also shown you how to get the data. If you are looking into very specifically central bank data, in the central bank, sometimes uh, and most of the time, you need to get this line banking data. How to get it done? Very briefly, I'll show you how we get it done in Malaysia from Bank Nagara, Malaysia, the central bank of Malaysia. Simply, we go to the central bank, right? And once we are there, just go to the website. And we look for rates and statistics. And here, the monthly highlights and statistics is very updated. You can see all the data here in the Excel file. We just simply click for Excel file to get the data. It has both Islamic and conventional data. We just look for the Islamic data. Statement of assets and deposits, liabilities, uh, and all this financing. You can get all these things, financial data uh, from here. It's very simple. Just simply click on the Excel file and that's it. Data is downloaded. Okay. So, uh, this one of the way. Now, now the next thing that I want to tell you for next 10 minutes is very crucial the flow of research means. It happens many times when I ask my PhD student, although I'm in the industry and working as a managing director of the business intelligence, still I supervise and review uh, some of the students in different universities. So many students come to me and tell me, doctor, uh, I want to do my analysis in startup or I want to do my analysis in SPSS I, or I want to do Python. This is very funny. Uh, we do not decide which software we are going to use at the beginning. We, again, I'm telling, we do not decide the software at the beginning. We do not. What we do, at first, 
at first we look into the literature. From the literature, we identify the research gap and the model, right? So what we do actually first thing first, once it comes to data analysis, we come up with the model first. Okay, these are my factors. These are my variables. These are the indicators I want to analyze. Okay, so remember, first thing first that you need to do is the modeling part. You could call it framework, you can name it, and different people call it different way. So you can name it framework, you can name it model or structure. We decide that first. For example, I want to understand how the Islamic banking deposit is helping or how the Islamic banking helping a country's economic development. That is my research question. So as a proxy for Islamic banking, uh, what I have, I have the Islamic banking deposit, for example, for the country development, I have GDP. So now I know my model, the indicators, I have Islamic banking deposit, I have uh, GDP. Then what is next? Now, the next part will be for this Islamic banking deposit and the growth uh, GDP, economic growth, do we have the data available? First, modeling. Second, data availability. Right? Again, uh, at first, we look into the model. Second, we look into if we have the data available or not. If we have the data available, the third part, we look into the method or technique. Okay, for example, we have Islamic, we are going to go for how the Islamic bank is affecting the country's economic development. For the Islamic bank, we are looking into Islamic bank deposit. For the economic growth, we are looking into GDP. And we search in the IFINTEL website or uh, Central Bank website. We found the data for the deposit. We found the data for the GDP. Next question will be the analysis that we want to do. Is it time series analysis, panel analysis, fixed effect, random effect, neural network, uh, co-integration, cross-sectional data analysis, OLS, to decide on the technique. So uh, how it is at first, model, data, technique, and finally, we decide on the software. Same thing can be done by using many software, right? If we want to do a simple regression, we can do the regression using hundreds of software, the SPSS, Tata, uh, eViews, Microfit, R language, Python, MATLAB, all this can do the regression. You can use any of these, whichever you feel comfortable. But not for all the analysis. Some of the analysis, you need advanced software. Okay, so the software part, you decide at the end, not at the beginning. If you decide on the beginning at the software and you start learning that software, then at some point you would realize actually you don't need that software and uh, you may need some easier software or some advanced software. So you don't decide, decide on the software first. Okay, so and once if you want to learn a software, I think it's always better if you go for R or Python because it almost has all the analysis that you want to do from very basic to very advanced. So if you want to spend your time and money spent for something advanced, that will actually help you. But if you are sure that you don't need the advanced things, just a space as a starter should be enough, then go for it. Okay, because as we have uh, seen before, data is not the numerical data. Data can be textual data, image data, videos data, and most of the statistical software software actually cannot handle those image text and things so in that case you may need uh, some r or python or matlab those software those are not difficult it will just take a bit longer time for you to learn once you know it it will help you a lot okay so these are some of the econometric techniques that we use in, uh, we have the 
ordinary least square time series panel quantile threshold wavelet analysis some of the techniques we have borrowed from physics mathematics and different discipline and we applied that in finance and economics also in islamic finance and then very recently we are working with the machine learning the predictive modeling sentiment analysis image processing analysis one thing here brothers and sisters doctors professors very important is that if we want to speak in our research if we just write the qualitative things just the concept people don't buy it we need the evidence we cannot just write something without evidence right especially if you're in the finance and economics field we need the evidence right and evidence is there but we just don't know how to do it right the things that we believe things that we feel like this is true feel like this is wrong if we just simply write it from our feelings it has very minimal value but if we can prove that with data and the analysis it will change the story because you are not speaking for yourself you are just speaking by data data is speaking for you all right um, that's why data analysis will help you a lot and it's not difficult and if you struggle for example you feel like you want to predict with neural network or some very advanced technique but you don't know how to do it um, there are many consulting firm like i fintel we are also helping the industry players many banks many institutions uh, to, to do the advanced analysis uh, for islamic market and other markets we are also training many central banks many regulatory institutions on these topics because these topics usually not being used uh, many in islamic finance because we don't really have the experts in islamic finance who understand uh, or who can do this analysis because for the islamic finance data analysis you need three things understanding data understanding finance and understanding sharia right uh, in other way if we can go back to a bit uh, you need to understand the usul al fiqh and fiqh al muamala uh, the basic principles of islamic jurisprudence at least the basics you need to understand uh, the basics of the finance the risk return and the time value of money the dividend policy at the same time you need to understand the data analytics uh, all these things you can be expert of one single part you can be very expert in data analytics and but other things you need to have some basic concept or you can be very expert in sharia islamic jurisprudence but you need to have basic understanding of finance and data analytics or you can be an expert of financial analysis finance but you need to have some basic idea of islamic jurisprudence or sulah fiqh and fulma mala or and also uh, basic or data analysis and best way if you can collaborate or take the professional service or consulting help so and this another way you can make the islamic financial data analysis nicer is by using different tools in ifsb they have some innovative tools in bond and sukuk information exchange by security commission malaysia they have some tools that you can use for makasid al sharia sharia screening how you make the stocks islamic and at ifintel we also have our own tool machine learning based statistical based uh to screen and analyze islamic financial market data so you can use actually all those tools to analyze the islamic financial market i think it's almost one hour so i won't keep you waiting anymore uh if power bi is one of the very interesting tool i would suggest if you're looking into dashboard visualizations uh, you can look actually into power bi that will help you a lot if you right have, i think it's it's all right you can uh, continue till you uh, complete the okay i think i'll just drag me five more minutes like that no so problem. i don't want to keep our participants waiting longer uh, maybe five more minutes i'll drag okay no problem okay so power bi is one of the tool that i highly recommend for you to use uh if you are familiar with excel then power bi is going to amazing thing uh that you want to try to 
it will make you like easier you know the problem is that you know mindset the moment it comes to our mind power bi w python matlab we got scared that i'm a shorya guy i'm a finance guy how i'm going to handle these things relax this is very easy just try the same way you have tried your smartphone for the first time and you will enjoy it right uh, all the fancy thing that you see like bloomberg thomson reuters and others are doing you can simply develop these things in your home in your office by simply learning these tricks and techniques and we i can tell our lawyers here if you need any help you can always come back to us and we will be very glad to help you uh, we have also some programs here uh, this particular professional certificate program is starting from 20th of november <clears throat> and this program is endorsed by aofi i'm sure if you are in islam finance you know the aofi so if you attend this program aofi will give you 10 cpd points um in this program there will be 48 hours total 8 week plus a two months plus then you will also get the one to one mentorship from our experts right and this program is also endorsed by malaysia government organizations but certificate comes from graduate is school of business to sm uh this is one of, the, one of the top university in the world i think ranked uh, one of the top 150 according to qs ranking in the world so they will give you the professional certificate for this program and in this program we will cover the islamic fintech blockchain cryptocurrency core funding the payment gateway digital banking to be advisory also artificial intelligence big data market analytics at the same time we discuss about the zakat wakaf qard hasan sadaqa and also sharia and legal issues so it's like a complete package uh, if you want to understand the fintech and islamic fintech we actually developed these programs and endorsed by government aofi certification by universities i highly recommend uh, to attend these programs and you can get the details in the website uh if you simply go for okay just give me one second so you can get it later simply go for islamic fintech learning i fintel here okay this is a link i'm also sharing the link on the chat box that you can check later so this cause this one hour discussion definitely not enough for you to understand that's why we have this 3 months long program where you can get the one to one mentorship and learning so from this program i have shared the link on the chat box you can also follow there and so this program will help you a lot to understand the concept and the detail the practice we have around uh, 10 ceos or the managing director will be coming in this programs this is completely one online on weekend actually Uh, okay so the link is shared in the chat box you can get it from there link is shared and if you need more information about the things we are doing if you need any help in data analysis data analytics islamic finance always feel free to communicate with us this is a whatsapp number our website and our email uh, that you can communicate with so this is q and a session now if you have any questions i'll be very happy to answer thank you thank you very much uh, dr movin uh, it is a really a wonderful session we had mashallah and uh, very important for uh, the researchers and also students of this field and we believe that uh, attendees uh, benefited a lot from your this presentation so let's see if there is any question or any uh, comment from this um, participants so you can see here few of them raise their hand i'm not sure that they are still want to ask any question okay uh, there is someone ask about the difference between uh, data information and knowledge okay um once it come to the analysis uh, we often often use interchangeably 
right? So this is more like a philosophical question rather than analytical question, right? Um, so if I speak a bit from the philosophical, in few seconds, knowledge is something like a bigger sense and data is like a track. Anything that we do in the past, that's a trace for that, right? You walk in a way, you're talking to someone, you're writing someone, I'm moving my hands, I'm moving my lips, I'm looking at you, each and everything that we are doing, this is data, right? And the information is a form of data in a, a formatted manner and knowledge in a bigger sense. All these things are compiled with other verified way. So um, from analytical viewpoint, once we use in our analysis, we often use these terms interchangeably. Uh, but the word, once we mean the data, is not only the numerical data, it's anything that we have used before. Knowledge is from the experience and from the different sources that we have, the things we have gathered. So other way you could say, data is the brick. Once you is the cement, it becomes the information. And once you format and build a building, it becomes a knowledge. That's how I look into this. Thank you, Dr. Mubin, uh, for your answer. I think there is a uh, Mr. Abdul Halim Yahyawi, if he has anything, we allowed you to speak. Uh, please, Mr. Abdul Halim. Mr. Abdul Halim Yahyawi, are you with us? Or Abu Saleh Abdul Qadir, uh, Mr. Abu Saleh. Mr. Abu Saleh Abdul Qadir. I think they're uh, not here anymore. There are a few but, questions on the question and answer box actually. Yes, yes. Please. Right. You're okay, so uh, Mr. Jasim Al, Jasim Lal Muhammad, got one question. Thank you for the okay. Uh, banks in Europe. Well, there are. If you look at the UK market and German, they have like pocket banking and few other banking that you can actually use for Islamic banking analysis. Uh, so if you look into the database, uh, you'll find many of the data available for that actually. And so, yeah, banks are Islamic banks or Islamic financial institutions are available in the European market. There are two other questions in Arabic. I can't read those. Maybe you can no, help. I think this is just asking for the slides. We okay, provide sure. That group, so you can get it from there. And another one. Uh, okay, the program is not free. There's a fee for that. The one uh, I've just demonstrated. So if you go to the link that I shared, you'll find the details, the fee. Okay, I think there's, uh, and, and someone already again raised the hand. Let's see, Mr. Ziyad Ibn Saleh. Uh, Mr. Ziyad, uh, welcome, Mr. Ziyad. Please, uh, you may ask any question. Mr. Ziyad Bid Saleh. Dear brother, are you with us, Mr. Ziyad? Again, okay, please send me Dr. Abdurazak. Okay, I think there is uh, one more question. Uh, no. Okay, we are going to end the session uh, in a while. So if you have any uh, question, please, in two minutes, we'll wait till two minutes to respond to any question. Uh, we we put uh, the link of certificate, how to get the certificate in the chat groups. So you can go uh, through it and you can uh, get the certificate from the link given in the chat group. Uh, Mr. Onik, uh, okay, Onik, Mr. Onik, raise the hand.
Onike Maruf. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. My name is Ablaziz Onike Maruf, the Chief Imam of Nasrullah Elifati Society, Nasfat, with the headquarters in Nigeria. I follow your program regularly at Islamic at Islamic Economics Club. And I want to appreciate your effort again, what you have done today. Jazakumullah khaira to the speaker. Jazakumullah khaira to the group. You are doing wonderfully well. Um, I follow you almost every day. I attend your lecture every day. And each lecture that I attend, I gain one or two things. I say, may Allah add it to a scale of good deeds on your kiyama. Our lecturer, our speaker for today, you have dealt with the topic, even though it's a new topic in the Islamic finance world, uh, we implore Islamic Economics Club to continue to bring speakers to come and educate people on Islamic fintech. It is new to us. It is not part of the curriculum of some of the universities. But by the time you are, by the time you keep on bringing speakers who will clear some misconceptions about it, we will educate the participants more about it. It will be better for the profession of Islamic finance. I say once again, Jazakum Allah Khaira. I follow you and I appreciate the knowledge I'm gaining. Uh, apart from being an imam, I'm also a, a PhD student of Islamic finance in Malaysia, and that's why I follow all your lectures regularly. Jazakum Allah Khaira to Islamic Economics Club, and Jazakum Allah Khaira to our speaker. From Nasrullah Levati Nasrat, we may, we may contact one of these days to come and lecture us virtually online. Thank you so much. Jazakum Allah Khaira. Welcome. Thank you very much, Aziz, uh, for your time and for joining us uh, and we we, we uh, expect your participation and attendance in our all english programs and arabic if, if you would like to learn arabic as well so it's our uh, pleasure to have you with us thank you so much thank you so much i think that's all dr uh, mubin we we can end the session and uh, before we end the session we would like to thank our guest speaker today uh, Dr. Muhammad Ashafal Mubin for this uh, wonderful session. And on behalf of our association, I'd like to thank you very much. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your uh, efforts, your time, and your uh, uh, this service for this Islam and Ummah and humanity. Uh, may Allah bless you, Dr. Mubin. And I would like to thank all participants who join us today around the world. Uh, we thank you very much for your participation. And we also would like to thank the organizer and members in the association, especially our uh, Director General, Dr. Alal Arbaid, for their effort uh, in arranging the programs and for their services for this Islamic finance and economics field and students and researchers. And uh, with that, I think uh, if you have any uh, last or concluding Words from Dr. Mubin, please. Yeah. It's a pleasure for me to be here and to share my thoughts with the participants. I appreciate the efforts by the organizations. For the participants, the last word is that you need to start and practice. And that will make you better. And whatever the things that we do, we do it for betterment of both lives. So let's make our intention clear and try our level best and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, he will grant us for the best. That's all from me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu rahmatullah. Thank you again, Dr. Mubin. Uh, and we'll see you again, inshallah, in our upcoming programs every day, every week, uh, in Arabic and in English. See you again. With that, uh, we conclude the session here. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.